If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. When you do, make sure you hit the notification bell. That means that you will be informed of when a new video has been released. If you would like to take that support one step further, you can do that via Patreon, which is an optional monthly service you can donate money towards the channel. Or you can go over to Ko-fi.com and for the price of a coffee, you can help donate towards the channel as well. Links for all of those will be in the description of the video. And without further ado, enjoy the video. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you happen to be listening to another interview from the SIL. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. I am delighted to be able to say that in today's interview, I am joined by Grunsborough manager, Matthew Carley. Matthew, how are you doing, mate? You well? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Keeping all right, what about you? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Not too bad. How is um, how is life in lockdown for you? How have you been kind of adjusting to to the world without football? It's been a bit a bit of a strange time, really. Yeah, totally, not a good time either. But let's say, luckily, luckily, to um, still able to be working. Right. Um, but yeah, missing football quite a lot. Yeah, it's not, weekends are not the same without it, and obviously training during the week. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I said. I said this to um, to Dean when he was on here. I think that you kind of go through that spell of you miss it and then there's almost an acceptance of, oh, okay, it's just not there anymore. But I think recently, I don't know, what the last couple of weeks since like the Bundesliga has been back and the Premier League's kind of back, everyone's even been, it just seems to be a bit of a buzz, doesn't there, about football again. Everyone seems to be talking about it. I mean, you, you must be kind of like chomping at the bit to to get going again. Yeah, definitely. Like since all that started, obviously with the Premier League and the German League, been organising friendlies, etc. Whether they go ahead or not remains to be seen. But trying <laughs> yeah. to sort of get going with it, really. Definitely. I'm sure we're it as well. We have managers as well, so I'm yeah, sure they're doing it. the same. Yeah. That's it. So I wanted to kind of go through, um, I suppose, really your involvement with Grunsborough, um before you took the management role because. For a club the size of what it is in the SIL, you know, throughout the 90s and throughout the, throughout the noughties, it was one of the powerhouses of the SIL. Um, but the past few years, and including last season, have just been a gradual, from the outside looking in, a gradual decline. Um, and ultimately, last season, that ended up with relegation. Now, you were playing during those times. What was it kind of like around the club? Um, in those years, was the kind of was the spirit still there, or you know what what you know? It's it's very well having a chat with somebody who's at the top and they're flying high and everything's great. But when you're in that kind of just cycle, what what is the kind of mood like amongst the whole team? Yeah, obviously coming over as a player three years ago, um, we still stayed up in senior. There was a little bit of a few scary moments. I believe we finished third or from bottom. Mm. Um, I think it was just a stage where the club. We met, obviously the club managed to stay up the season before, but there was all new players coming over. Players needed time to gel. I yeah. believe the target was sort of a mid-table sort of finish, especially with a new side. We obviously in a relegation battle that we pulled out, obviously away with towards the end of the season. But like I say, obviously the club maybe it was a bit of a obviously shot for the club. Obviously the biggest club in SIL, nine senior league titles, mm. seven senior clubs. Obviously, there is a lot of pressure, and I'm sure the players felt that as well, myself included, coming to a big club as Grunsborough. But like I say, just needed to take a few steps back to start going forwards and start rebuilding again, to be honest. Yeah. Um, last season, the season we got relegated was a bit of a struggle, player commitment um, at training, and you never know who's going to be in the side. Mickey mm -hmm. and James Leach worked tirelessly trying to get players over and keep the boys motivated, but it wasn't meant to be. Um, yeah. Well, sports we've got relegated but yeah, maybe I, I think that's the best thing to sort of happen to the club to be honest I know some people at the club may disagree and say you've got to stay at senior at all costs but sometimes you've got to go back to go forwards yeah I mean I remember watching you guys against Trimley Red Devils it was one of the games that I recorded last season you were absolutely amazing in that game up until the point that you conceded the goal and it would just seem like the moment you conceded one everyone's heads dropped um, and it was almost just like an inevitability of, oh, here we go again. And sometimes that's really hard from a mental perspective to get that out because you were well in that game. That absolutely, you know, right up until a certain point, I think I can't remember, it might have been five or 10 minutes into the second half, you were well in that game. But yeah. it just seemed to be a bit of a confidence thing. Would you 
would you kind of say that was more to what happened last season as well? A hundred percent. Like I say, that season we we one nil up against Claydon. Um, obviously, the one against Trimley, we're one nil up half time with Noel Hobson scoring. Just wasn't meant to be. It was just a confidence issue. I think we so we had a run of nine or ten games and not really getting anything. Yeah. We're three nil up against Gulp to the last five minutes and end up drawing three all. So yeah. yeah, I think we've just lost a confidence. Really, we needed that one good win mm. to sort of boost morale and get things going again. But this wasn't fortunately meant to be. That's it. But yeah. I think obviously, just like I said before, I think the club needed to take a step back, get relegated in Division One take a step forward in years to come, which hopefully me taking over since January, hopefully hopefully we're on the path to start doing that really. Yeah, I mean let, let's let's kind of go into last season then, because for the club, you when you took over, you were the third manager to to ultimately be at a club. Now anyone that knows football and has been inside the game, when you haven't got that level of consistency, it's very hard to pick up any sort of momentum and get something going as a team. You know, obviously, I think from the conversation we had before you came on, you were you left the club and then came back because obviously they then decided. You know, you what you want. You know, you came back during the second manager. Um, for you, how how did you find um, life under the you know under the second manager? And then how did the opportunity come about that you would then take over that job? Well, after a few games in, Luke Reed and Alex Day took the manager's job. Um, Luke Reed asked me to come over as a player coach, which I did. Right. Um, fortunately, before Christmas, he left and went to work to Ireland. Um, had he still been here and working in Ipswich, I probably would still be a player coach. So, right. I got lucky in the job, as, as, you, as you could say. Um, Luke's still a good friend of mine and delighted to announce as well from last week. He's finally got himself fit, um, sorted a few things out going to be back in the UK in July and he's going to be playing next season for me which is great Brilliant. Which is a big boost for the club um, greatly experienced as well SIL titles so mm. massive boost for the boys it wasn't having back as well definitely so so from your perspective um, having been in coaching and then as I said we, you know when you when you took over the role what what did the club kind of say to you to convince you that it was the right time for you to step into this because obviously with it being your first job, there may, may you know, might well have been some sort of hesitation from your end. But uh, what, what persuaded you to take the job? I've always wanted to get into management. Um, I'm only 26, so I didn't think it would come as soon. Um, wow. But yeah, the club asked me, obviously I was coaching, they can see how organised I was. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. They saw, they saw how organised training was. Um, and just asked me if I would take lead and, and get going with it really right. um, obviously you can see obviously with the club's history there was a little bit of pressure of course um, mm. the club have been great with me. they've asked me to steady the ship which I think I have I've got yeah. all players enjoying their football again um, they're enjoying themselves training hard every player seems to be believing what I'm trying to bring to the club as they've all signed for next season so fingers yeah. crossed for moving forward really um there was no hesitation from me to take the job obviously i live in the village now as well um right. so to be a manager of your, the home village that you live in yeah it was a no-brainer really and to manage some obviously there is i've had some difficult moments obviously i see the players more as mates haven't been in the dressing room with them but yeah they seem to respect me they listen to me and in the changing room and i like to think i like the idea of what i bring to the club as well which is enthusiasm um i'm a good man management type of manager as well so yeah so so what would you say you've learned about yourself in those because obviously that you didn't really have a huge amount of time to kind of get your claws into obviously with the whole pandemic kind of taking place etc um what do you feel were the main learning points in those in those few months that you that you have been man you know manager well i didn't know how I, I thought like to be honest my role before was to turn up for training really play on a Saturday and do, do some coaching, like take warm-ups. Obviously, I plan my training sessions beforehand, but I didn't know how actually, not being big headed, but how quite organised I am as well. Right. Um, that was pleasantly surprising. Um, <laughs> I didn't know how sort of, in my coaching career, obviously with youth football, I've never, you never really need to sort of man management um, as you yeah. do it all through, through parents, etc. I didn't sort of notice how good my people skills were um, and how much of a good man management skills I have so 
the players sort of back me up on that as well. So there are yeah. a few things I've learned about myself, really. Um, I'm sure players may have some other different opinions, but <laughs> who knows? <laughs> so, I mean, it's obviously been a very difficult time, not only for everyone in football, but everyone kind of all around the world at the moment. But from your perspective... Do you feel as if what has happened that the season finished in the way that it has has kind of given you more time and the club more time to reflect and really start planning for next season? Because when you're in the thick of things, game in, game out, you're just focusing on one week to the next. Whereas I suppose you now you've had more time to kind of sit back and look at the bigger picture and think, where is the club going? Do you feel that that has potentially helped you? I think it has. Um, I'm sure me and the rest of the players will prefer to keep battling through and keep playing. Mm. Um, obviously, safety first, everything like that. Yeah, for that. Um, but yeah, it's been good to sort of reflect. Obviously, them seven or eight games I've been in charge came thick and fast. Didn't really have sort of time to put my own authority on things. So it's good to sort of plan through everything, reflect on myself, reflect on the players. Mm. Obviously, there were some players that still had a point to prove. But pre-season's coming up. Everyone's got a clean slate. So. Yeah. including myself so it was nice to look back on things and sort of reflect on my time and, and Alex's time who I'm joint with for the seven to eight games that we was yeah. in charge so yeah I think it maybe not be the worst thing that can happen um, there's yeah. a lot of changes going around in the club at the moment obviously I'm the third manager in a season there's some other good changes behind the scenes like there's the dressing rooms thanks to our reserve managers are, are being redone out finally um, so yeah we're moving forward on and off behind the scenes. Obviously, that's brought us a little bit more time. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be good times coming up for Brunsburg in the next two or three years, hopefully. And hopefully, I can be leader to the, the uh, success of that. Yeah, fingers fingers crossed from my part as well. I'd love, love to see the club kind of back up into the senior league as quickly as possible, really. Um, I suppose, really, moving into this season now, um, the club may well be looking for some sort of stability on and off the pitch. I don't know, but have they spoken to you about expectations for next year or is it more about just trying to build up and is there a bigger picture? Because again, kind of speaking to Dean at at Achilles, despite how big the club is, now their aim is to, right, let's start getting a bit of a project going here. Let's try and build something for the next few years rather than, instant success and like your results are the biggest and most important thing so what, what have the club said to you exactly the same boat as dean um it's right. more of a job for the future well yeah a job for the future getting young boys into the first team steadying the ship getting every getting the smile back on people's faces the role of the players will just be to turn up on wednesday work hard put a shift in saturday and who knows where we'll be at the end of the season we haven't got an exact target I'm sure people will think Brunswick should be going for promotion, but we've got to look at the bigger picture. Um, if it doesn't happen this year, we'll go for it the next. But we're, we're rebuilding. It's been some dark times the last few years at Brunswick and hopefully yeah. start turning it around if that's in the year, next year. If we don't get promoted next year, it's not the worst thing that could happen. And we'll go for it next year again and the boys will be even hungrier. I'm, I've no doubt about that. But just need to get people enjoying their football, the smile, the smile back on the villagers' faces and who knows where we can go from there. So, final bit from me then. What I'm going to allow you to do is give you the opportunity to sell the club to any potential players that are thinking of maybe coming to the club or who are trying to find a new club during pre-season. What is it about the club and about yourself that should make them come to you? Look, we are rebuilding on and off behind the scenes. Starting from scratch. Fresh start for yourself as well. If you want to come and be part of it, just send us a message. Um, we've got a great bunch of lads, lads that should be playing a high level, like Aaron Seaman and Virgilio. Um, come and be part of it. Some top players there. I've just named two, just an example. Some great youngsters coming through. Like I said before, if you want a fresh start, give me a message, turn up for training. I'll let you know when that is and go from there. Happy days. Well, thank you very much, Matthew, for coming on. I really appreciate your time this evening. As I said, I, I, I just really hope that the club can kind of turn things around. And I'm sure with yourself at the helm and with, with everything that's going on and off the pitch, that it will, you know, won't be too long before they'll be back up in the senior league. Because from a neutral's perspective, that's what we want. We want the biggest and best teams up in the top division um, and competing as much as possible. So I wish you all the best in your first full season whenever, whenever 
that happens to be. So good luck. I really, really, really appreciate your time. Nice off. Thanks for having me. Thank you. No, no worries at all. But if you guys have enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more interviews and more content coming your way very shortly. But until next time, as always, adios. Mm -hmm.